VMX is an old communication protocol used for a variety of applications. It was invented mainly to control various lights on ever more complex music stages. While VMX was and still is a great tool to control a relatively large number of DMX fixtures, its design is not well suited for a large number of individually addressable pixels. One example for all, with one VMX universe, which consists of 512 channels, you can only control 170 pixels. You would then need a second device, which will add, again, only 512 channels. And why 170 pixels? Well, you need three channels for one pixel. And since you cannot divide 510 by three, the closest number is 510. And you are left with 170 controllable pixels. To give access to multiple DMX universes from a single device, a protocol called ArtNet was designed, and it quickly became very popular with the very same stage designers. Nowadays, every professional controlling system includes ArtNet protocol in a list of control options. With ArtNet, you can combine multiple DMX universes and send the data over single Ethernet cable. This is already a huge advantage compared to need for separate cable for each DMX universe. In line with its predecessor, ArtNet, unlike, for example, SPI, is a standard. Thus, you have different manufacturers and software developers all working on the same thing. ArtNet solved the need to transfer a lot of data over a single line. Official number sets the maximum number of DMX universes on a single network well over 32K which is ridiculously high number of RGB pixels. Of course, nothing is for free. And depending on the software or hardware you are using, you need to pay for every universe that you want to use. Inevitably, ArtNet inherited some of the MX512 limitations. In the end, ArtNet is only VMX over Ethernet. For example, it is considered a bad practice to use the last two channels of each universe. This can be nicely illustrated on a use case where you are working with 171 pixels. You got 170 pixels covered with the 510 channels and you are not using 511 and 512 channel. What you can do with the single pixel that you are left with? Well, you can either start in the second universe with first channel or you can use these two channels and only one or first channel from the second universe. Still, this might look like a petty problem. What might be a bit more trickery is assigning universes to individual outputs. If you don't have unlimited budget, you will end up dividing channels from one universe to multiple outputs. This can be easily illustrated on a two rolls, five meter each with 300 pixels. For each roll, you'll use separate output. One universe, 170 LEDs. Second universe, 130 LEDs. You are left with 120 unused channels or 40 pixels. It would be a waste, right? So your starting universe for the second output will be second universe. But the starting address or channel will be 391. Remember, all previous channels are assigned to the first output. And you continue. Your third universe, 170 pixels. That is 210 in total and you still need 90 pixels from the fourth universe, or 270 channels. Leaving your fourth universe with 240 available channels, or 80 pixels. But you can, instead of channels and universes and addresses, be thinking about pixels. A much simpler approach is using SPI output as it is, with no ArtNet involved. You make or you take the 300 pixels and assign them to SPI output. No addresses, no universes. And you don't even have to ditch the main advantage of ArtNet, its compatibility with most control systems in the industry. We are mainly using ArtNet as a trigger for animations in our projects. Predefined channels can trigger animations from either SD card or from a running software and control various aspects, such as speed and brightness. Another comparison of ArtNet and SPI can be illustrated on the size of the data transferred over the network. 
on an example of around 2000 pixels used in this studio background, you can see that the transfer is around three times lower compared to ArtNet data. Also, you can see that the data are being sent out to the network regardless of the device's presence on the network. This is by design, because you can send the same data to multiple devices listening to broadcast. While this can be a useful feature, it can also clog your network on very large projects. You need to watch for any bottlenecks such as routers and Ethernet switches.